My name is Jamel Luna. Um, Puerto Rican Bay, raised in Camden, New Jersey. I'm 31 years old now. Recently moved to New York City about three years ago. Growing up in Camden was, was good and bad, right? Um, I always say it taught me street smarts. Um, it was poor, it was dangerous, so you knew where not to hang out, you knew um, where, you know, at what time to go home, um, you know, you, you were influenced by, by a little bit of everything as far as drugs and alcohol around you. Um, and I always said that the most difficult part for me about growing up in Camden was the gay card. Um, just because I knew I was different, but I never saw anyone like me. You know, I knew what it was to be, um, to grow Puerto Rican, I knew what it was to um, portray yourself as like extra uber masculine, right? And so that's what I tried to be. Uh, so then with being uber ba masculine, um, during that area it was all about the, the, the baggy clothes, right? So it was all about baggy clothes, the fitteds, um, really saggy pants. Any, you know, you had to talk a certain way. You couldn't really, you know, let people know that you were, that you were any type of um, feminine. It was kind of like, you know, knowing the culture, the language. Um, um, you know, you would hear it constantly. You know, ay, qué pato, qué femenino. Ay, él es como, you know, él es como un poquito como de allá, como de lado, como, you know, like different. So it was, there was, there was always like a, like a conversation that you would hear amongst people that that people were were like a little bit different because they were a little, a little feminine, a little gay. Um, so those are things that kind of um, walked with me throughout my, my childhood into my 20s um, until, until now. Now I really don't care, right? Now I can kind of like um, appreciate that's, that part of my life, but um, now I'm more myself. So if, if I happen to have a, a, a feminine moment, then so be it. Like let it out, you know? And I feel like now I understand as an adult that when you're just genuine, it'll go further than when you're trying to be someone you're not. Every, every time I would come back from school, I would go out in Philly. And so one time I bumped into a family friend uh, and I was like, crap, I was like, watch, they're gonna rat me out. And that's exactly what happened. So then a few weeks later, I'm in the car with my grandmother and I don't know why I felt the tension and I felt like she was gonna ask me and she did. So she said in Spanish, she said, Jomil, tu eres gay. And I remember just being so angry because I was just like, you know what, I can't hold this in anymore. And I said, see, sí, well, I'm gay. And so she basically, for her, now I understand it, right? For her, it was more because she was scared for me. So she started having a conversation with me about, I think we all be careful because, you know, people like that, they get, they get bashed, they get hurt. People, you know, people can, you know, try to hurt them, you know, cut them, shoot them, whatever, you know, the case may be. And then we had a whole conversation about, oh, well, at least you're not, you know, the type to dress up, right? Uh, so that was like a big thing, right? The type, and so, you know, but not, she didn't know, you know, that behind closed doors or that with my friends, you know, I tend to have fun and I, you know, become like a loca or whatever and I get feminine and, you know, you just have fun with your friends and you use a whole different language. So my grandma basically took it upon herself to tell the whole family. <laughs> So she told everyone. So I never had to come out to my mother. I never had to come out to my uncles. She told everyone. It's fine. You know, she did me a favor. So it was kind of like an, un un -hit, um, an unspoken truth. And, um, and so, yeah, it, it almost maybe kind of like brought us closer. Because now, because at that point, I feel like now they needed to kind of like watch over me more and they were more concerned. It really wasn't until recently, I would say that, the, like as of, as of like maybe like two years ago, because of the social media age, that they got to really know how gay I was. <laughs> because, because they started seeing a lot, of, a lot more of me online. And so um, I had to create basically um, two different Facebooks because you know, now they were watching me and I was just like, oh no, and my grandma had a lot to say about it. Um, and I love her to death, but she had so much to say about it and it would bother her because she, she always said, well, why you gotta act like that? You know, people are just making fun of you. And I said, Grandma, I don't care if people make fun of me. Like, I make fun of myself. Like, you know, I'm the one getting a kick out of it at the end of the day. Um, so for me, it's really become um, more of a process of me explaining to them, like, look, this is just, this is normal for us. This is normal for, for, for gay men. This is how we kind of live. This is, this is our lifestyle, our, our lifestyle. This is, this is who we are. Um, and there's different, there's different shades of, of, of the spectrum of LGBTQ and, and, and everything in between. And now I almost take offense to the fact that they, 
they at one point said, oh, well, at least you don't dress up, or you, at least you don't do drag, or at least you don't, you don't act feminine. You know, now I'm, I almost take offense to that because now I'm so immersed in my community that I'm just like, well, you're talking about somebody else that is part of my community. That is discrimination, basically. You know, it's a form of discrimination. The fact that you're going to be, um, you know, judging someone because, oh, they're a little bit more um, feminine than the next guy. Um, yeah. Thank you.